Hello everyone and welcome once again to Captain Goodspeed Maths. I'm Joe if you're new around here and today we are covering the OCR FSMQ new specification and in particular linear programming. The bane of any student's life when it comes to FSMQ in my opinion. Uh, when Certainly when I taught this my class really didn't like this and, and even when I learned it at A level uh, people just don't like linear programming. Um, I even did it in my first year at university so it shows you know how far up it goes. Um, but uh, yeah, it, 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 it's not an easy topic. I've come up with a, a different way of teaching it this time around, so hopefully you guys will find it helpful. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to use inequalities to shared regions and solve linear programming problems. So, um, first of all, we're going to revise some inequalities. Now, this you know bef on the old spec was on every single year first or second question you would get an inequality question like this this is from an exam paper not entirely sure which one i can't remember um but uh, solve the following minus six less than two x minus one less than seven so what do we do here well um we we uh, focus on uh, one side first of all, so 2x minus 1 is greater than minus 6 uh, so we take the minus 1 over the other side we get 2x uh, is greater than minus 5 or we get x uh, which is x is greater than minus 5 over 2 then we focus on the other inequality 2x minus 1 is less than 7 so 2x is less than 8 so x is less than 4 uh, so therefore you stick it in between the two so we know that x is greater than minus 5 over 2 but less than 4 so we stick it in the middle and uh, jobs are good so example 1 then identify the region identified by the following inequalities so we've got 2y is greater than x we've got x is less than 8 we've got y is less than 6 and y plus 2x is greater than 12. So, first of all, we're going to focus on 2y is greater than x. So what does that actually mean? Well, what it actually means is um, 2y is equal to x. You know, treat it as an equation. Uh, rearrange if necessary. So y is a half x. And plot the line. There's nothing really to it. We draw the line in. That's uh, the line y equals a half x. And then uh, we should read the original inequality well what we wanted was uh, was 2y greater than x so we want the region uh, that is above the line uh, so we shade the opposite so we shade under the line so next we look at the line uh, x uh, is less than 8 or the inequality x is less than 8 but as before we treat it as an equation x equals 8 we then draw that in so basically x equals 8 so that's a vertical line um, through um, 8 on the x-axis and then we go back to our original inequality and we wanted x is less than 8 we want less than 8 so we shade the opposite so we shade everything that's greater than 8 and that's all you're doing here you're shading the bits that you don't want eventually you'll end up with a bit of white stuff that you do want and that's the bit we're interested in Next then we have y is less than 6, so we treat it as an equation, as always, y equals 6. We then plot the line, y equals 6, so that is just a horizontal line straight through uh, 6 on the y-axis. We then look at our inequality, we want less than 6, so that means we don't want greater than 6, so we shade um, greater than 6, which is up here. Now then, this is the interesting one, so uh, get me pen out again. So y plus 2x is greater than 12. So what we do here, we treat it as an equation, y plus 2x equals 12, and then we use the cover-up method. This is what I would use. I've rearranged it here. Uh, this is something else you can do is call it y equals 12 minus 2x. But what I do here is cover up the first one. So we've got, uh, so let x equals 0, so y equals 12. Okay, so uh, stick a little cross there. And then uh, let y equal 0, so 2x equals 12, so x must be 6. So we stick across there, and then we draw the line in between it. Or alternatively, you can do y equals 12 minus 2x. It'll be exactly the same answer. Plot the line that goes, uh, hey presto, through that. But the, the cover-up method for linear uh, 
programming is a godsend. Anyway, what we want is uh, for this equation to be greater than 12. Um, so what do we do there? We want to be above the line, so we shade below it. That's what you interpret from that. If you are a little bit stuck on, on um, whether you shade above or below, just pick a point. Pick a point, uh, f uh, 2, 5, and see if that is greater than 12. So 2, 5 is uh, f 4 plus 5, which is 9, and that's not greater than 12. So we don't want this region, so uh, we keep the opposite end white. So, hey presto, we've got a little region here, uh, which we're going to call our... And in linear programming, you would call that the feasible region. But that is just a little bit of shading out, um, which is something you're going to need uh, to do linear programming. So uh, those are the four points that are, are possible values. So here we go then, a proper example of linear programming. Now I've got this from uh, the new OCR FSMQ textbook. So uh, this is the exact sort of question that they're going to want to ask you in the exam so uh, a combined car and lorry park is to be marked into parking spaces there are c car park spaces and l lorry spaces the spaces for for cars <laughs> um are each to have an area of 10 meters uh, squared and those for lorries an area of 30 meters squared the total area available for parking is 2000 meters there must be at least 50 car spaces and 20 lorry spaces. I. Write down three inequalities that need to be satisfied and I. I. Illustrate the region satisfied by these inequalities using the horizontal axes for C and the vertical axes for L. Now the first thing about these is they're very wordy. But you just have to pick out a few inequalities. So it's telling you that there's three and there is, um, you know five numbers on there um, I mean you can probably tell what some of them are going to be there must be at least 50 car spaces and at least 20 lorry spaces the total area available for parking is 2,000 meters um, and then, then we'll talk about what the 10 and 30 mean in a minute so I've highlighted all of the important information there for you that is what you've got to do in an exam. Don't worry about the rest of the uh, the, the stuff in there. Obviously, read the question, but the, the main stuff they want is, is in red there. So, let's do uh, this. At least 50 car spaces. So, C must be greater than or equal to 50. At least 20 lorry spaces. Well, L must be greater than or equal to 20. The area constraint then, so it said there's there's 2,000 metres uh, available, or metres squared available. Um, each car space takes 10 metres, and each lorry space takes 30 metres, just remember that. So, 10 times cars plus 30 times lorries must be less than or equal to 2,000. So, you, you, uh, the, 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 uh, the amount of space a car takes times the amount of cars plus the amount of space a lorry takes times the amount of lorries must be less than or equal to your total area, which is 2,000. That is the hardest inequality that you will get, but it's the same every time. It'll be, um, I don't know, the number of students and staff must be less than or equal to 300 or something like that. And... Uh, you know, it'll be inequalities just exactly the same as that. So, um, just to reiterate that again, the amount of space, 10 metres, times the number of cars, plus the amount of space times the number of lorries must be less than or equal to the total amount of space. Which you can cancel down to divide everything by 10, so you get C plus 3L is less than or equal to 200. And I would recommend that you do this uh, just to keep everything in scale. It probably will ask for the simplest form. Always do it anyway uh, would be my recommendation. So, we now want to draw everything out. So, this is uh, the, the, the graph, obviously. So, um, from 0 to 100 on the... Uh, L axis and uh, 0 to 200 on the C axis. So we're going to draw it in now. 
Uh, so the first constraint, C is greater than or equal to 50. So we draw a, hor a vertical line through uh, 50 um, on the C axis. And um, we ask ourselves, well, we want to be greater than 50. So we shade the opposite. So we shade that side. Then we draw a line uh, through L equals 20 on the, on the L axis. And we say, well, we want to be greater than 20 so we shade beneath it like that and then the area constraint so c plus 3l is less than or equal to 200 again i would recommend the cover up method here so if you cover up 3l you've got c equals 200 uh, you draw across um, there like that and then if you cover up c you've got 3l is uh, 200 so l is about 67 uh, something like that so it's, a, it's around about up there then you draw your line in and I t tell you what I was pretty close to it wasn't I but there you go and then you ask yourself do you want to be above or below the line we want to be below it so we shade above it like that and hey presto we've got our feasible region and we're gonna call that R so in an exam I'll just say uh, put a little R there like that so, on to the next part of the question then. The parking charges are £1.50 per hour for a car and £2.50 per hour for a lorry. Write down an expression for the hourly revenue R. Not to be confused with R that I put in before, but hey-ho. That's probably why I didn't put in R <laughs> um, before. So... We've got uh, £1.50 coming in every hour for every car, and we've got £2.50 coming in every hour for a lorry. So, your total revenue is one fifty times how many cars you've got, plus two fifty times how many lorries you've got. So, R equals 1.5 times C plus 2.5 times L. So this is called the objective function. You're looking for the largest value of R. So these companies will do this sort of analysis on, um, you know, how many cars and lorries they're ex expecting to come in. Uh, you know, if they have a full car park, what is the optimum amount that they can have, given the amount of space they have, given how many cars they must have, given how many lorry spaces they must have, um, and that is exactly what we are going to do. So what we do is uh, we'll go onto our graph and then we'll use the ruler method, something called the ruler method, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, to find out which set of values gives us the maximum. So there's our graph once again. We've got three possibilities for the maximum amount of revenue, and these are the three extreme points of the... Uh, I'm trying to find me... Ah, here's me mouse. So we've got uh, this point over here, we've got this point over here, and we've got this point over here. Those are the three possibilities for the optimal amount um, of revenue that they can get. So let's draw uh, our line um, R equals 1.5 C plus uh, 2.5 L. So it says find the values of C and L to maximize the potential revenue. So the easiest way to draw this is pick a common multiple of 1.5 and 2.5. I've picked 75 so C equals 50, L equals 30 using the cover up method uh, and you draw those on and just do it as a little dashed line. That is that is what I do in an exam. And then what you want to do is put your ruler on that line and keep it parallel and move it uh, towards the graph as far out as you can go uh, and until uh, you come out of the feasible region. So we just move it in this direction and uh, we see which point we hit last because that's going to be the maximum. So here we go. Let's see. So we hit that block. So that's the first one. So it's obviously not that one. Then we go out to the second block and we still haven't heard the th hit the third one. So that must be the maximum uh, amount of revenue that we can get. So uh, just reading it off the graph, it's 140 cars and um, uh, 20 lorries. But the other way you can do that is use uh, lesson five of this course, the intersection one you can see where the line uh, c plus 3 l equals 200 meets the line l equals 20 so you let l equals 20 there so you've got uh, three 
uh, times 20 is 60. We take that over the other side and we get C is 140. So there you go. Um, a quick way of checking your method. So 140 cars and 20 lorries is the, uh, the, the, the maximum that you can get. And uh, usually a part five of that question would be calculate this revenue. So you would put that 140 into uh, C and 20 into L and work out the total revenue there. But that is uh, linear programming. I hope that this lesson has been helpful to you all. Um, I realise that, you know, it is a tough topic. I think I've, I've went through it at a decent pace this time. If you have found it helpful, make sure you leave a like down below. If you haven't found it helpful, then let me know uh, what it was about it that, that didn't help you. And as always, the... Um the, uh, the, the PowerPoint will be available on the Google Drive to go through at your own pace, but uh, it is tough. It's all about practice. There is plenty of examples online. If you, if you just type in linear programming examples, there will be tons for you to go through, and uh, it, they're all exactly the same. They're all like this. Uh, follow the same process, and you will be fine and bagging yourself a whole load of marks in the exam. But uh, anyway, subscribe to the channel for more FSMQ videos as well as uh, other maths uh, in the future. And uh, very best of luck with your FSMQ. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.